In this video, I'll teach you how to create email sign up form in Flowdesk because there's no point in sending emails if you don't have any subscribers. If you already have a website, you can use embedded forms or pop ups to collect the emails. If you don't have a website, then use a full page form or the new link in bio form as Flowdesk provides you with the URL and you can share it anywhere and it acts like a, a mini website for you. That's basically the landing page and also the uh, link in bio. Now I'm going to cover all of these form types in this course, but I'm going to start with the embedded form. So this is the, the lesson for that. In case you want to jump to any of the other ones, just click on this one, uh, this banner here, and it will take you to a YouTube playlist where you can select what you need. Hello internet people. My name is Robert and I help creators with the technical side of the business. And and, and this is the fourth lesson in my complete Flowdesk course. I already covered how to sign up and get a 50% discount for the first year, how to send beautiful emails, import subscribers, and essential settings to avoid spam folders. So that, that's what we already kind of covered. You can go back and watch the first lesson by clicking on this video banner right here. Uh, but let's just first build an embedded form that you can place on your website. Okay, let's create a form. So let's click on forms here at the top. And then here, just new form. Now you have a lot of different templates here as usual. So same as we saw with the emails, there's a lot of templates here, but what you can do here on the left, you have some filters. Um, if you have already a website, then I would use a pop-up or inline. We're going to actually use inline, but then if you don't have a website, then I would definitely check out link in bio or full page link in bio fits better creators. Or if you want to link to this page uh, through your social media or something, so let's say you have an Instagram and Instagram only allows you one link in your profile. So you can place it there. And what you can do, and let me show you some of these examples are really great for that. So what you can do is actually in Instagram. So once somebody clicks on that a link, they will land on this page and you see that they can either subscribe to your newsletter or they can visit your website, purchase certain you know products or you know you can just link them to different places from here perfect if you don't need a website but a very lightweight kind of a hub for all your links and then you obviously have full page which is basically acts like a mini uh, website for for you and uh, the thing they can do here is to sign up to a newsletter so it's not really a website per se but it's just a very basic you know a page with this form but we're going to start first with uh, inline and then look at link in bio later. So I'm going to filter by inline. And if I scroll down here, there's a more designed versions of this. So I want something with an image. So either I can go with this one or maybe this one. Design wise, I kind of like this one. I'll just need to change a bit of the color. So I'm going to click on it. We're saying, hey, if somebody subscribes uh, using this form, which segment we sh should we put it in? So I could say it's a generic newsletter, but let's say I actually, this is a promotion for my emails. So my email course or something like that. So I'm giving out a free email guide. So I'm just going to say interested in email because that way I can segment my uh, subscribers. So let's click on save. So building an inline form works exactly the same way as an email. So if you click on anything, more options will appear here on the right. And again, we can upload an image. So for example, here I have avoid spam folder. So this is like a, my giveaway to my um, to my viewers. Now you can see it doesn't really work here. So maybe I can change the shape. So I'll do like this and maybe I can drag it like this. Yeah, it works better. So the image is not a square. So that's why I have to kind of move it along like this. Great. And then I can obviously update the title. And this way too long. So I need to reduce the size of the font here. And this looks better. Then I have an email address. So if I click on this one, you can see that there's only one field right now. But actually, I would like to have more than that. So from here, what I can do is already have an email address and it's actually mandatory. You cannot not have it. But from here, I can add first name. Let's say first name I'll keep as default and I can drag it here on top. So I want to have first name and then email address. At this point, that's all I'm going to ask for. The less you ask at this point, the higher chance there is that they will sign up. So this form specifically has options, segmentation options. So people could uh, pick what they sign up for. So for example, here they have like news and updates, discounts and sales and so on. But for me, I don't want to even show this. What I need to do is click on this block here. So just somewhere outside. 
And now here you have the form and then you have the preferences. I want to disable that. So I don't want to see that. Okay, great. Then you have some other options. We're already looking at this in, you know, for this block itself. I'm going to change the background as well. A bit too, too, in your, too much in your face. So I'm going to change to, my, to one of my brand colors. Let's see if it works better. I'll use this one, but now if I go into text and make it black, then it will work much better like this. Cool. Same thing with these fields. I need to stylize them. So I'm going to just make sure that the border is like this. And then font again, I just need black just so that it stands out. Great. And now same thing with this button. I can come here and let's just add another fill color like this. And then let's change the font color to, I think white will work better than yellow. Yeah, that looks great. Okay, I'm gonna again click just somewhere here at the top so that it's it's taking the whole block. And here you do have few options still. You can change the background style. You can see that now in the background there's the secondary color and it kind of goes there. So I, I like what it, how it looks like, but maybe I'll change the color to a bit more a bit more interesting one. So I could now choose this one. I actually like this color, but I would like to flip them. So I'm just gonna do that. I'm gonna flip them around. Okay, maybe this is a bit too dark. So let's see if something else works better. So something like this. It just looks a slightly different. From here, I can also adjust the width of the form. So let's say if you don't want that wide, I'm just gonna keep it to 900. Like this. We can preview it on desktop and also on mobile. Okay, looks great. So if somebody lands here, they're gonna just be able to uh, fill in. But you notice there's no image. That's because here, image on mobile. So you can actually enable it and then if you come to mobile, you'll notice first there's an image and then uh, you have the text and so on. Now the title is a little bit too big on mobile, so I'm going to just reduce it slightly so then it works better on mobile as well. So let's take a look. Okay, I like this a bit more. I could even reduce it more if, if, if it's necessary like this, especially if most of my uh, visitors are on mobile, which for most of you it will be, then it's good to have a bit. That it works really well on mobile. So always check that it's working. Cool. I like how it looks like. And the thing about the inline form is it's quite simple. That This is pretty much all you can do for design because we're going to place this on our website. By the way, if you're interested in setting up an email newsletter in Flowdesk but just need a little help or guidance, then book me for a one-on-one -on -one call or check my Flowdesk turnkey services where I'll basically build it for you. Uh, the links will be in the description. So from here, what I'm going to do is click on Next. And then Flowdesk is asking you if you want to have double opt-in. I already mentioned if you're starting out, maybe it's better to avoid op double opt-in. So for now, just say no. So then let's click on continue. Then it's asking if you want to be notified when somebody subscribes. Now, in the beginning, it might be exciting to get, you know, notifications that somebody subscribed. Uh, but, you know, once you start, uh, once you get the ball rolling, uh, it's a bit overwhelming. So I'm just going to say no, I don't want to not be notified. And then if you go next one, after this form is submitted, display success message or redirect to URL. So in most cases, you're just going to uh, show a success message, but maybe you actually want to redirect people to certain page. But this requires that you have maybe another sales page or a website where you can redirect people. For me, the success message is fine because it's just going to be a form on my homepage. But let's click on continue. So now it's giving us the code that we need to place on our website. Now it's saying here, recommending basically, hey, put this one in the head section of the website. This is something uh, that developers would understand. Uh, and also then you put this inline code wherever you want to show this uh, form. But we're going to just simplify it. Wherever you want to show this form, we're just going to paste both of these codes. So then it works uh, per page. I have here my website. And I'm already in WordPress and in Elementor, but this will work with any page builder because they all have this uh, element. So this is my website. Let's say I want to place the form somewhere here. So I have, let's say somewhere between here. So what I can do is I come here and just look for an element called HTML. Again, pretty much every page builder has something like this. And now I'm able to place the HTML code here. And this is also HTML code. So I'm going to copy this, go back here, place the code. And then I'm just hitting enter a few times. So this is the code that we just copied. 
and we want to copy the, the second part of the code here as well. So now when I copy it, I can place it here. You can see that the form appears immediately. Now it doesn't really fit the design right now. You can see there's blue and this kind of a skin color, but you can see that it already appears. And now if I would preview the changes, when I scroll down, you'll notice I have the form. It works perfectly. So now I can add myself to the list like this, and then just click on get on the list. And this is the thank you for subscribing. This is what you see once you're done. So this is how you add the form to your website. So let, one thing I forgot to mention is how to change that thank you message. So I didn't show that. So let's go to design from here. So we, we're in the code section, but we can go to design. And when you click on the background, you have the message section. So this is when they subscribe, what do they see? From here, you can choose, you know, you can choose the friendly one, or you can also type in yourself. Here's a custom one. So you just come here and you can start typing thanks or, you know, whatever you want to say at this point. Thanks for, so you could say something like this. Hey, thanks for the sub. And you'll get your checklist within a few minutes because that's basically what we uh, promise to do. We promise to send that, you know, uh, uh, avoid emails going to spam. This is a checklist. So I'm going to send that to them. And I'm going to show you how to do that in just a second with workflows. So once you're done here, this is basically now saved. You can go back to Flowdesk and you notice in forms, you have now this form. And uh, from here, you can also, you know, uh, pick the code. This will open up the embed code again. Or you have other options if you need to customize it, change segments, edit, and so on. So you're able to create these um, forms just like this. Works pretty much the same as the emails. In the next lesson, which you can basically watch here, uh, I'm going to show you how to create a pop-up form that you can place on your website. It will well pop up after a set amount of time, and then the visitor can uh, subscribe to your email list.